Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. It is the 28th of May and we're going to do an update on Bitcoin. So in today's video, as you may have seen by the thumbnail, we are talking about a potential cycle top at 65k where Bitcoin came up to. And obviously it has nosedived from this point already. But I know there's a lot of people out there still thinking this is a chance to... Uh, bottom out here and then start making new all-time highs so i'm really going to dwell on whether this is you know a potential bounce point that we're reaching right now or is this just the start of a massive massive sell-off that was waiting to happen so i'm going to share my views on that and uh, yeah main things we're going to have a look at if we take a look here first of all bitcoin um hit a very very significant fibonacci projection level of 1.618 which was here the way you can draw that we had our december 2017 high draw a fib retracement tool down to this significant low here then you get your projection levels to the upside and it was at this 1.618 that we came up to this sits at around 61k obviously we slightly overshot it to 65k but that move up above 61k was very short-lived and uh, yeah, so that's looking at the FIB projection on Bitcoin. Then another key benchmark for crypto is Ethereum. Ethereum hit some very, very key levels. So we've got the major pitchfork to the upside, which is an original pitchfork on the log scale. So we've got our first, second, third pivots, and we hit the 1.5 line very, very nicely. But more importantly, there's two very, very nice FIB projection levels that got hit perfectly. If you look left, you'll see uh, those levels here. So the way they're drawn, again, fib retracement tool from this very key swing high down to this swing low. And you can see that we hit the 1.382 absolutely to the T at around that 4700 level. Okay, on top of that, if you look at another key swing high and swing low, again, drawing your fib retracement tool down from here to here. And this point brings us to our 2.618 FIB extension. So we've got double Fibonacci confluence right in and around this point. As well as that, we've hit our pitchfork 1.5 line. So a key level within the pitchfork. And then we saw a substantial sell-off. So that's just looking at Ethereum. Again, a very impo important chart to look at with it being a key benchmark uh, cryptocurrency. Next up, and this was something I posted on Twitter, very, very key for me. This was a big, big warning sign for crypto about to sell off. Basically, uh, original pitchfork, first, second, third pivots, hit the upper warning line to the T. And again, we're looking for confluence with Fibonacci levels. If you do a Fib extension of this move up, extending it from this low, you can see we came into the 2.618 very, very nicely. On top of that, basically, um, this, sorry, this is um, the total market cap excluding Bitcoin, by the way. Uh, and the yeah, I believe we came up to 1.5 trillion, so it was a nice psychological round level that we came up to. And Bitcoin actually just went over 1 trillion, so both reaching very key benchmark levels in terms of market cap. Uh, if we then take a look at the total market cap, including Bitcoin, again, we come into a key point of resistance this time using our first, second, and third pivots. Uh, original pitchfork again, this is always on the log scale. But we come into the upper median line and time and time again, we just find resistance there. I've drawn a smaller time frame pitchfork to the upside here, holding this bit of price action to, to the upside. First, second and third pivots. We stayed within the pitchfork and then it got breached to the downside. So this was an early warning sign that this is about to roll over further and correct this whole move up. Next up, we have got this pitchfork i have to say it was found by one of the members of my discord um so very nice of him to share this one it is drawn on the i've got this on the weekly time frame but the pitchfork was actually drawn on the daily time frame so you will find the points are a little bit off key uh but basically yeah first second third pivots it's a shift pitchfork and you can see how well actually the price has been respecting the levels so we come up and hit the median line find resistance Come beneath the lower median line, then use it as resistance, test the lower warning line, and now we've made it back to this lower median line. And this is the point now that I'm saying is very, very key resistance. So you can see the lo loss of momentum, and this is one of the things that I teach in my educational course about the loss of momentum within Pitchfork. So here we're testing the median line. Here we can only make it as far as the lower median line. We go as far as the lower warning line, and then the next high, again, we're struggling with the lower median line. So we're nowhere near 
reaching this median line once more. It's showing weakness. It's showing that the market is ready to roll over. So in terms of the Elliott Wave count that you can see here, the Elliott Wave count, the potential count, I'm not saying definitely we're rolling over. This is my bias at the moment that we are seeing weakness in the market. I will talk about the bullish alternative as well so we can weigh up both arguments. But basically, yeah, we've got the first wave up. It's a one, two, three, four, five. The wave four looks pretty minimal relative to the wave two, but that's because we're on the log scale where price at higher levels gets squashed together. Uh, so you will see if you really zoom in on these levels on TradingView, you will see this is a very substantial pullback uh, and you can see wave four does not overlap with wave one. So very nice, clean five wave move up there. I'm very convinced that's a nice wave one, two, and then this was our wave three. And then there's it's a bit dubious about how you count the wave four here, but I have it. Definitely my preferred count is this triangle play out. We've got an A, B, C, D and E. Uh, and then I can see five waves for this. I'll probably zoom in on the daily time frame on Bitcoin in a moment to show that a bit clearer. So, uh, yeah, definitely see this as a triangle. I know there will, there will be people out there saying wave four finished here. Um, in my opinion, that was very unlikely. It's quite a short lived wave four relative to the wave two. Um, and the problem I have with calling wave, the wave four there, you basically your argument is that this is wave one of five. This is two of five. This is three of five. Probably we're going into four or five and then five or five. Um, first of all, this would be the start of your wave three of five. And it looked very, very corrective going up. OK, that's why I have it as a D wave as part of a bigger triangle. Um, but as I say, we can look at that in a moment. So these are some of the key things that I want to discuss in today's video. Um, so, yeah, before I get started, obviously, uh, I... <laughs> When I don't get time to post or a video out on YouTube, I may just put some tweets out there. And that's pretty much what I did because following on for the last video, I spoke about Bitcoin going into an accumulation phase and potentially looking to push higher. It was, everything was looking good. Uh, but soon after, things started look to started to look quite concerning, in particular on the stock market. Uh, so I put out this tweet, not convinced about Bitcoin here, feel it needs to retake the 62 before we can start looking for longs again. Um, uh, same thing about Ethereum coming into that resistance. It was my concern. I said, uh, need to watch and see how price reaction, uh, the price reaction around this level before thinking about any further longs. Uh, and then enough said basically we just showed the, the resistance that was we, we came into so i warned the group this is not a place that you want to hold on be long i mean this is looking like it could fall back any moment okay so do keep out uh, an eye on twitter as well if you want to keep an eye on my updates um yeah before we dive into this uh it's a uh, quite a big date actually this is the two-year anniversary of my cryptology group uh, so within that we cover the top 15 market caps each week uh, you will get ad hoc updates within the discord also you get full access to my full educational program and um, yeah these are the the main perks to it and uh, i'm basically because it's a two-year anniversary decided to do a deal will be available to the first two people who apply for it so you're gonna have to act quick basically it's free membership on the first month cancel any time uh, so the link to that will be in the description of this video. I'll talk more about it at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's talk about Bitcoin. So I did say we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the wave four flipping into the wave five here. So basically the way I have it is the wave four would be this A, B, C, D and E as such. And the E obviously is shallow. It doesn't quite come down to hit the, uh, the lower trend line connecting A and C. But it doesn't have to. Not all of the waves need to hit the, the, the boundaries of the triangle within um, within these patterns. OK, so that's the way I have it. And if you zoom in on this, if you really zoom in, honestly, this is very overlappy price action. There's no way you can call that an impulse going up. So that's my reservation with calling this a wave four finish here. Then this being a and then going into your fifth wave, you call that one, two, three. The problem with that is the three, the first wave of three, does not look impulsive in my opinion. So as I say, I have it, this is still being corrective, finishing the corrective sequence here with the E wave of the triangle. And then we go into this fifth wave and you can see quite nicely five waves up, one, two, three, four and five. Uh, on top of that, you can see wave three of five is hyperextended 
uh, I think it was a 4.236 extension of wave one. So if that's your wave one or five, and there, there you go, 4.236, absolutely to the T, very nicely hit. I believe that retracement also was a very nice fib retracement. Uh, let's just remind ourselves. So that would be your wave one, two, three, that's your four. So if you fib retrace the three, there you go, it hits the 0.236 very, very nicely. And then we go on to form the fifth of fifth. Okay, and then we hit the sell off. Now, looking at Bitcoin alone, you could argue it, it could continue uptrending because there was no, apart from that FIB projection we spoke about, the 1.618 FIB projection that I mentioned right at the start of the video, there was no other key resistance to suggest that we we're going to sell off. So that's why it's very important. Look at Ethereum, look at the top 15 market caps, look at the total market caps, and also look at the stock markets. These are the things we review week in, week out within the group because it gives you a fuller picture of what's going on. I'm still in two minds. Stocks have not broken down yet. They haven't broken down. They're at a very key level. And so that's why I still say there is a potential further upside for at this moment in crypto. But I think stocks are going to struggle. And I think that's going to impact on crypto. And we're going to see further downside. Okay, so that's where my bias lies. All right, so this is the Elliott Wave sequence that I'm looking at. We've spoken about the pitchforks. Let's pull on some other key things I like to look at. So... Uh, simple moving averages, very, very basic tool on the weekly. I just want to focus on the 20. That is the one that is key, taking off the rest. The 20 is our green line here. Just look at the 20 week. Yeah, holds pretty much holds the price action all the way up here. And then all of a sudden in the bear market, it's acting as resistance. When it flips to a bullish market once more, look how it's holding as support. Then what happens as it comes down, it's acting as resistance. And then again, support on the way up. Very, very concerning. Yeah, big drop beneath. Generally what happens is this kind of thing. You drop beneath, you may come back up and retest it. We may see that bounce, but generally you're gonna see further downside. Same applied here. Big break of the 20 week moving average. You can potentially later get a bounce, uh, but then there is going to be more further downside. So it's always a very big warning sign when you break that 20 week moving average. For, and for me, that is the main thing that's affecting my bias here. I would want to see us get back above that 20 week moving average before looking for longs again. Okay, uh, because for me at the moment, this could absolutely continue to tank downwards even further. Uh, especially, would it, honestly, if stocks show any sign of weakness anytime soon, crypto is coming down fast. Um, the lifeline is stocks kind of going sideways right now. And if stocks do turn bullish, fantastic. We could be uh, uh, going bullish again. And as I say, if that is the case, if we are to be bullish again, I would have to say that this is your wave four finish here. Then we're going on a one, two, three. I don't think four is finished, but you can get a complex four, maybe a running flat, uh, you know, so maybe bring it across slightly. You know, you get a bit of an, uh, a three, three, five running flat, and then you get a fifth, something like that. Okay, so that is the bullish argument. As I say, I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I see a lot of weakness coming in. Um, but that's, I, I want to throw it out there from an Elliott Wave point of view. You know, anything's possible. This is technical analysis. We were assessing probabilities. In my opinion, probability suggests further downside as it stands. So, Another key indicator that not many people will um, give reference to is open interest. So based off uh, Bitcoin CME <clears throat> futures. Uh, so the open interest, I will pull it up. Let's pull it up on the daily. Okay, so there, there was some very key warning signs uh, all the way back here. So you can see divergence in the open interest. So there's your lower highs and obviously we had our higher highs all the way up from here to here. Yeah, but it was concerning. The uh, the open interest was dying off, okay, throughout this whole move up. And then eventually, you know, it kind of hits that waterfall moment, okay? So let's not forget, alt sold off about 50%, at least 50%, some of them even more so. Uh, Bitcoin wasn't hit as much and that's what I anticipate. I expect the sell-off to be much greater in alts. You know, there's 
less fundamentals behind them. They've not really proven their value and um, been absorbed within society as much. Um, so the lower market cap, a lot more volatile. They're likely to sell off a lot more. So yeah, that's the open interest. I want to show you the divergence there. Obviously, we know most of you will know about the RSI uh, divergence that we had here on the daily time frame. So very, very evident, you know, lower highs whilst we had the higher highs on the charts and the price action. So very clear textbook divergence. But divergence doesn't always mean that you're gonna sell off. Yeah, it can sometimes suggest that you're just going through an accumulation phase and you can push higher. So you, ca you can't just rely on that. And that's why we I like to incorporate the pitchforks, I like to incorporate Elliott Wave, and I like to look at correlating charts, looking at the bigger picture, looking at stocks and all of that also. Uh, so next thing I want to look at, we'll bring on Camarilla Pivots. Weekly time frame is where it's at. This is really, really key. So let's just expand this so we can see it better. Um, yeah, so why do I look at the weekly Camarilla Pivots? Why? Because they've been very, very significant over the last four years. So you can see during this, so basically when you're on the weekly time frame, this, these periods represent one year. You can see we come down to the S4, wonderful support. What happens after that for the following year? We push into the R4. We then finish the year just kind of slightly beneath the R3. As a result, when we run into resistance, we have a sharp sell-off. But fortunately, we found very good support at the S3. We actually closed the year well above the R4, showing it's a very strong bull market. Now, as a result, that meant for this year, we've gone way above the R4. But as I say, now that we're pushing into the major resistance levels that I've mentioned, across you know ethereum bitcoin total market cap i mentioned at the start of the video it's led to this sell-off and now we're back beneath the r4 showing that we're really struggling to hold on to this upward trend we're now very close to the well we're currently at this level 36k uh, which is your r3 so this is a very very key level yeah very key support or resistance level and i see it probably likely to act as resistance to the downside Okay, so these are the Camarilla pivots. Other horizontal levels that I like to incorporate are the ODBs, that stands for oldest daily block. So it basically means looking left as far as you can on the daily time frame. So let's go on the daily. Um, and then plotting out the basically the order blocks off of those levels. And I find them to be excellent support and resistance levels. So you can see here this ODB acting as very good resistance. Uh, this one here acting as good support, but as I say, I, I see it coming down from here. I'm looking for the next target, probably taking out these lows, probably coming into around 26K. So more importantly, there's a very nice pitchfork holding price action to the downside. And we can look at that here. So this is an original pitchfork, first, second, third pivots, again, log scale. You can see how well price is being held here uh, by the pitchfork. So nice run into the median line, slight sideways move, getting ready for the next break downwards all the way down, bodies of the candles staying above the upper median line, a wick almost as far as the lower warning line. And then we've managed to bounce to the median line where we've just rolled over once more. Okay, so still very much in a downtrend on the shorter time frames that we can see here. Um, so yeah, there's your median line resistance. And to be honest, I was speaking on Thursday to the group saying that there was the potential for a bounce up to the upper median line. Uh, and I was thinking price could even go as high as 48k, something like that. Uh, reason for 48k again, that was the 20 week simple moving average level. I was thinking that we could get that retest pretty soon. Potentially, that was providing that stocks show some strength over the next week, which I was thinking might happen. But as we've seen today and over the last few days, Apple has been looking weak. It's had an impact on the US indices. And um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a video at some point covering stocks. It'll be very interesting. Loads and loads to talk about. Obviously, we've had the collapse in bonds. We've had the collapse in the dollar. These are all the early warning signs, in my opinion. I think stocks will be the last to really show the damage that the economy is facing. Um, but who knows? I mean, it's gone parabolic in stocks. Who knows? Can it continue higher? Who knows? I mean, it is May. They say sell in May, come back St. Ledger's Day. I think that's wishful thinking for if you sell off in May this year. I think it's more like come back in 2040, to be honest. But anyway, that will be another story. That'll be another video. Uh, so yeah, I see this coming down. Obviously, if this is a cycle top, when you get a bubble, which Bitcoin has definitely been in, I mean, all you have to do is go on the weekly time frame, 
zoom all the way out and put the linear scale on and then you see what exactly we've been dealing with which is an absolute bubble um, of a chart uh, so yeah generally when you sell off you only have to look at previous re retracements in these bubbles so what happened how far did that retrace coming left how far did that retrace uh, how far did this one retrace yeah just go back do your research uh, they will retrace a minimum of 61.8 percent and typically you're hitting your 78.6 the lower market caps probably going to hit the 95 percent fibs um yeah they'll go close to zero a lot of them uh, but bitcoin with it having a bit of substance behind it who knows 61.8 might hold 78.6 probably more likely so what you do obviously a uh, percentage tool let's bring the log scale on just for clarity percentage tool so 61.8 actually brings you to around 13k i believe so there's so what am i talking about 26k so that's the kind of 60 percent retracement 61.8 kind of level 26k so there's an odb at that point so that's my initial target i think you could see a bounce off there you could get a one two three we're making a four here and we come down for the fifth so a nice impulse to the downside hit 26k maybe then get a bit of a bounce we'll have to reassess when price gets down here to kind of fine tune it but that's the kind of play that i'll be looking at um so yeah so that that's that would be the initial target 61.8 retracement but ultimately i do think bitcoin could very well come down to 78.6 i know a lot of you are thinking no way bitcoin can come down that far it basically comes down to around 30 uh, 13000 so 78.6 is around here 13000 as you can see if you look right and um, that kind of ties in with this here yeah so there's your or these highs rather 13000 so looks looks reasonable nice bit of support there again you if you look left you've got the, this kind of range here at the top of the previous high so it from a ta point of view that looks very very reasonable coming into this level so we've got this high this range here uh nice big doji in here so yeah it, it would look like a magnet for price so that's 78.6 fib uh, so I see price potentially coming down there. So it basically means we could get very cheap crypto very soon. So from an investment point of view, I think that's very, very interesting. And from a trading point of view, it's a case of looking for shorts right now. That's my opinion, unless stocks make some kind of recovery. Bitcoin, in my opinion, would have to move above 48K, uh, that 20 week simple moving average or on this pitchfork, get back above this upper median line. So very simple, plot this pitchfork on your chart, first pivot, second, third. Yeah, so these are your, your major swing, uh, high, low, high. On um, I'm on the four hourly time frame right here. Log scale, don't forget, make sure you've got the log scale on here, otherwise it will be distorted. So yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes everything I wanted to mention. Uh, if you do want, you know more regular updates don't forget i will be giving very thorough updates on bitcoin across the markets occasionally looking at stocks and also your voted charts any chart that you vote for i will cover whether it's crypto stocks bonds forex whatever it is i will cover it uh, so that's it within cryptology i did say i'd mention talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video so if we just pull up this this is the offer the link will be in the description basically first month is free because it's free you won't get discord access it's basically a taster to find out what cryptology is like and if you want to continue continue if you don't then you can cancel any time and not pay anything at all so that is the option if you are interested and yeah without further ado i think we'll wrap up this video um i think i've mentioned everything i need to and uh yeah gonna round it up guys all right take care